The chance to just stop and talk like this is certainly not easy to come by. Wouldn't you agree? That battle earlier was tough. The one against Dane, I mean. I didn't expect that after everything, he would still hesitate to raise his sword against me. Were it not for that, perhaps I'd still be no match for the Twilight Sword. Even after 500 years. The Loom of Fate, huh? <sighs> I still haven't found a way to utilize it to its full potential. But there's still time before the Heavenly Principles awaken. Yes. For 500 years now, ever since the Cataclysm in Conria, there's been no sign of activity. Not long ago, you witnessed the Hydro Archon destroy her divine throne. Yes? Such a flagrant disregard for the rules, and still Celestia took no action. I suppose that's proof enough of the Heavenly Principles situation. However, the Heavenly Principles will awaken. We just don't know when that will be, or what might trigger it. You could say that. Just look at Kari Bear. He was so pure and single-minded. The space we now find ourselves is a perfect representation of who he was, quiet and peaceful. Even as a hilly churl, seeing the terrible sight within the mirror wasn't enough to taint his spirit. He brought comfort to the people of this world, even though he was denied the very right to be a part of it. So ask yourself this. Who was it that deprived him of that right to exist? Of course, that's only one example. My feelings about the heavenly principles are too complicated to explain in just a few words. Ether? You're the only one in this world who calls me that. There's so much I wanted to ask you, but for some reason, I'm not interested in asking those questions right now. There's just one thing I have to ask. One thing I could never understand. Why? Why can't we continue our journey together? Hmm. At the end of my journey, I arrived at a place known as the Sea of Flowers at the End. Do you remember? A long time ago, when we traveled between worlds together. You told me you wanted to find a place in the universe where that one flower was in full bloom. To have a place like that suddenly appear before me. Well, would you think of that as a coincidence? You mean... I miss you too, Ether. But as this war continues to rage, and as I continue to seek that final answer, I don't even know how to face myself sometimes, let alone my own brother. <sighs> huh? What's going on? This space has lost its tether. I doubt it'll be able to exist much longer. In fact, aside from our inability to physically interact with each other, there's something else you should know about this space. 
With Kari Bear gone, we won't be able to remember anything that happened here. Everything in this place will be wiped from existence, including all memory of our reunion. But as a player, I mean, I think I will remember. You're only telling me this now? Okay, so we are back in the point of that yelling and as a reader, I don't know what I should be saying, but in Hong Kong Impact 3rd, they pulled off a crazy story. So I'm also thinking they're gonna break the fourth wall in Genshin as well and talk to the reader. We might interact with the characters later on. Maybe something like that would happen. Like Hoyoverse is good at st storytelling, so I'm not worried about the story. It's gonna be best either way. Oh, Paimon woke up a little earlier than you, so Paimon will fill you in. The villagers said that they saw us sleeping near the village yesterday. They couldn't wake us up no matter how hard they tried, so they decided to just bring us back here. Oh, and Dane came by just now? It looked like he was injured. He didn't say anything, though. Just made sure that you were alright and left. Kinda seemed like he had a lot on his mind, but that's Dane for ya. Hmm, let's think for a second. We were in that memory, and we saw that guy you called Kari Bear. He was the missing villager that we've been trying to find, right? And after that, uh, Paimon doesn't remember what happened. Wait, really? What a score! Well, what happened after that? There you are. <laughs> Sleep well? Bayron, you sure seem happy. Did something good happen? Something good? Huh. Wasn't anything good or bad, I'd say. It's just that, well, the village organized another search party yesterday. It didn't feel right to leave all the searching to the adventurers. So there we were, searching away, when suddenly this one guy said it all came back to him. According to him, one day around dusk, he was passing by this one tree outside the village. And he saw our missing villager. There he was, sleeping under that tree all by himself. His parents came a little later to wake him up, and they all left together. It looked like quite a happy family, apparently. And after that, well, we all started to feel like that really is what happened. Kind of strange that we forgot all about it for so long. Oh, and we also remembered his name. Curry Bear. Now, that's not a name you hear every day. Would have been helpful if we remembered it sooner. Well, I hope he's happy wherever he is. And we're all relieved now that we know what happened. Seems like everyone thinks Curry Bear left the village. That's probably for the best. At least they have some sort of explanation now. how a toast is doing maybe we should go check on her if she hasn't remembered like everyone else 
we can tell her what happened. I'm puzzled at the fact that Dainsliff wants to don't wants to give the thing to Lumine. And then again Lumine is fighting for the heavenly prison. There are so much plots missing and I haven't watched any theory crafting videos in a while. I need to see them. Dancewave is knows something that we don't and Lumin is trying to do something that we don't even know. And there is the Fitui Harbingers. There's the abyss. Maybe in future we are gonna know there's something there's someone else organizing from the behind. Paimon didn't see her in the village just now, so she's probably at the tree. Come on, let's go talk to her. 